Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to today's class, The Triad, Advisors, Mentors, and Sponsors. Now, it's very important for us to have these conversations as we grow up or as we progress in our careers or in our day-to-day -day living. So if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. This is the Stellar Life Show, and we've had amazing classes so far this year. We started this year, we played the future. We had a conversation on Ahead of AI. We visited the Gold Mountain. And today we're talking about the triad, the need for having advisors, mentors, and sponsors. Now, this is very important because as we go through our career, there are times where what you know is not enough. What you know is not sufficient as it would usually be. Who you know matters and who knows you also matters. That's why we're going to be looking at this concept, advisors, mentors, and sponsors. I'm sure you're excited, um, equally excited you know, to share this with us. But before we fully go into advisors, mentors, and sponsors, there was a particular concept that I heard from a lady, um, an American, Black American. Her name is Carla Harris. Um, she's the vice president at Morgan Stanley, one of the you know, fastest growing and best investment banking firms in the world. I first heard this concept about having a personal board of director from her. So she comes up with the concept that says that there's a need for each and every one of us to have a personal board of directors for our lives. Now, what do you mean by personal board of directors? Of course, just the way we have board of directors in an organization where you have the chairman, you have the executive directors, you have the non-executive directors, independent directors, any kind of director that you can think about. She also says it's important for us as individuals to have such people. You definitely know that the information that an executive director or anybody on the board is privy to is not the information that everyone that works in the organization is aware of. Some of the staff who are the internal um, stakeholders are not even aware of some of the workings or the happenings at the board level, right? These are confidential information, restricted information, private information. They are not so public. Only a few are privy to it. Now that's the same way we should manage our lives as individuals. You don't go bearing your concerns or things about you just to everybody, right? You don't seek everybody's opinion about your life. Everybody should not have a say. Everybody's word should not carry equal weights in your life. There are some people that when they give you their opinion, you know that it really matters and you pay attention to them. And then for others, you know that this person is not so important or I shouldn't really pay as much if, um, attention to what this person is saying. So personal board of directors, um, as we go through this class, I would encourage you to create a personal board of directors for yourself. Now, as much as I've heard this concept earlier, I haven't been able to successfully say, put together a complete personal board of directors where they know each other. But it's something that I'm willing to do, you know, this year. And maybe at the end of the year, when we're having a review of the classes that, you know, blessed us more and classes that we had to implement things, we'll be able to mention it and say, now I have a complete board of director for my life. You know, this is you treating your life, your destiny or your fate as an organization, right? You know that at the board level, decisions are made, critical decisions without um, subjectiveness, you know, objectivity is watched out for when decisions are going to be made. It's not about emotions, it's about what serves you right the same way too for your life. There are some decisions that you want to make where you're emotional about and someone is able to call your attention to say you need to look beyond yourself. You need to step out of yourself to look at this with it from a different lens, from a different perspective, right? So that's what we're going to be um, talking about today. So your the first task for each and every one of us is to try and create a personal board of directorship for ourselves, you know, so this is you having corporate governance for your life, right? Just the way corporate governance is important for any life or any organization that wants to thrive, I think it's something that we should also strive for. 
and you know as we as we try as we make efforts you know things would fall in, in place for each and every one of us so that's our first tax from this class welcome to everyone just joining us so why do you even need a personal board of director just the way every organization needs a personal board of director for diverse reasons the reasons why you have some organizations announce some persons as chairman of the board is really for different reasons. For some, it might be for their expertise. So the same thing, the reason why you keep certain relationships around you, the reason why you would elect an individual to your inner circle is because you've seen that they have something that will be beneficial to you. Now, everybody is important. Everybody is beneficial. But, you know, for different phases and different stages of our lives, there are people that we would let in into our inner circle. Everyone cannot be your friend as much as you want to be friendly, as much as you want to show love to everybody, as much as you want to be nice. You cannot be vulnerable with everybody, right? So as you create your personal board of directors, right, for the organization of you, your personal life, you want to look at, okay, so what's fun functional expertise is this person bringing into my life? What difference would this person add to my life? What value are they bringing? And as you're also curating your personal board of directors, you need to know that your mentors and sponsors should be on the board of your personal director for your life. And then another reason why you bring people to be on your board of director is because of the perspectives that they have. If you typically take the financial statement of an, an organization and you go to the past where it has a board of director where you get to read the chairman statement, when you see the profile of the chairman, you simply get it. You know why they brought this person, right? You look at the years of experience, maybe the sectors he has worked in, what he has gone through, what he has achieved, the difference that he makes. Why? Because if you are a publicly listed organization, you cannot just afford to put anybody on your board. Whoever you put on your board can mar that organization reputationally and that reputational damage can lead to a financial damage. So you cannot afford to make any mistake. I'm sure if I've been following the news, um, just some weeks back, we saw that Femi Otedola became the chairman of First Bank of Nigeria. Now, this that is very strategic because if you have known Femi Otedola and you have sort of studied his career, um, his experiences, the business that he does, you know that he's a star boy. Let me put it that way. He's a star boy when it comes to, you know, making things turn around for an organization. You look at when he was at Transcorp, if you see where the prize was and what it is now, if you also check immediately, the announcement was also made for First Bank. You see the difference in the share price when he also started Geregu, you know, power. The same thing. So this man has a track record of being successful, right? So you don't just want to bring anybody because anybody can be your friend or anybody can be your personal board of director. I mean, you want to bring people that would, you know, make great influence, great transformation. Because your association is very, very important. So you cannot just um, desire or just say, oh, let me just be acquainted with anyone just for anyone's sake. Because we know that time is very crucial, it's very important, and we cannot afford to waste our time, right? So you bring people on your board because of diversity of, diversity of perspective. When you are able to see life from one angle, you are able to bring different angles to it, you know, play devil's advocates. Don't just make sure that, they thoroughly ask you questions for you to know that I'm definitely sure about this decision about, I'm about to make. For example, um, every time I have to change a job, I have certain HR professionals, you know, who are also my mentors in my space that I speak to. I you know they really ask me questions like, why are you leaving? Is it for the experience? Is it for the exposure? Is it for the money? Just so that you know why you're leaving and that you have thoroughly thought about it. Or you know it's a new culture. You know it's a new place. Are you sure you are ready? Are you prepared? What if it doesn't go as planned? What if it's a toxic place? How are you? You know, this is just them helping you to really, really think through your processes. That's what um, having a personal board of director would help you do. Besides functional expertise, diversity of perspective is very important. And also, it's also good to know that you have people around you that can tell you the truth. Um, as I've grown over the years and I'm still growing, I know some people who would never tell me the truth. Why? Because they don't want to offend Stella. They don't want Stella to feel bad. But I have friends, 
I'm fortunate to be blessed. And I think each and every one of us should, you know, appreciate those people that we have, have around us where they can call you and tell you, you are really doing rubbish. You are, you are, you are falling off the wayside. You are looking away from the plow. Like you have digressed. What is going wrong with you? People who can really talk to you. Don't be that kind of person who progresses on the ladder of success and no one can speak to you. And then as a person becomes relevant to you, lonely at the top. You shouldn't be lonely at the top because the truth is a lot of successful people that we have around us are really lonely at the top because they are afraid um, of the opinions that they would hear. Most of them are surrounded by psycho fans sometimes who tell them what they want to hear. So it's always a confirmation bias when they say something people around them will say yes or oh god that's very correct that's what i also wanted to say you know no one is able to give a contrary opinion because you don't want to be in the wrong books of the person so as we grow we should be fortunate and you know try to carry everyone who has been a part of our journey and we know that they're important to our next phase you know we need to carry them along some people are your friends now but for the next level where you will be going to they might not necessarily be there they won't be your friend and it's not because you are proud it's just because they have served their purpose you know sometimes relationships have timing there's a reason why god brings some people into your life so it's very important that you're able to discern why this person is here for what moment and for what purpose so that you will know how to manage the relationship effectively another reason why you have personal board of directors is for strategic networking um so you might be fortunate to meet Shay Tunubu right now you know you might not necessarily have an idea what you want him to do for you immediately but you know that you cannot afford to lose that relationship because he is very critical and very important for maybe possibly any other thing that you want to do so you want to have that network to say I know Shay Tunubu and he knows me so it's not enough that you know a person it's also important that the person knows you and that you're able to Call the person so you know that you're just one dial away, you're just one click away from a person. Also, some people on your personal board of directors, you might you don't necessarily always have to call them, right? Like Yeshua Itunibu, for example, you don't necessarily have to call them, but you know, occasionally you check in. Maybe at the start of a week, you say, Oh, have a great week, or at the start of a month, you say happy new month. You know, this is you just lubricating the relationship so that you're not out of touch, you know, and then it becomes you know far apart. There are some relationships where you are the one that that has to maintain it you're the one that you know you have to keep you know investing and investing into it because there's something called an emotional bank account and you cannot withdraw from where you have not made deposits right so relationships are meant to be symbiotic and not parasitic not what can this person do for me what can this person do for me is also what can i do for the person right what is in it for me in this relationship and what is in them for it for this relationship right so it's not one-sided always think about it you know that way um so we've spoken a lot about personal board of directors maybe some of the reasons why you should have a personal board of director i think one of these six will resonate with you and if you have additional points please feel free to share um it's very important you know we're, we're all learning no one knows they all um, so the next is, you might ask yourself, so why do I need a personal board of directors, right? Or who should be in my, some of the characteristics or attributes or features, whatever name you want to give it, right? You definitely know that the people that should be in your personal board of directorship should be people that you share the same values and same goals. You know, just as the good book says that evil communication corrupt good manners, right? If you have a certain standard, um, level of value whatever goals aspirations you've set for yourself you cannot afford to you know associate with people who would make those potentials or goals unrealizable you know you know how the general um, quotes that we all know says that where you will be in the next five years is as a result of the books that you read and the company or the association that you keep so you need to go out with people who are on the same page and the same frequency with you shared values and shared goals whatever your goals are right some people don't share your values they don't share your goals they're not the wrong people for you it might just be that what is valuable to them or what their goals are at the moment is not your priority so the fact that they're not your friends now doesn't mean that they cannot be your friends later right just like you say always understand the timing and the phase of every relationship, right? Um, so for example, 
I am single. I do not have any kid or kids. So I cannot always want to go out with some of my friends who have children and all of that. Sometimes there will be times where I want to go out with them. There will be times where I'm like, no, I just want to be with the single folks and all of that. It's just me understanding the timing. When I get to that zone where I become a parent and I'll be like, okay, so I need to, you know, flow with them. Because at that time, we're sharing the same values, you know, maybe deeply, right? Um, it's not mutually exclusive, right? So the next is for mutual support and trust. So for example, if you are writing a professional exam, say CFA, sometimes you need support. You need somebody to tell you, oh, wake up read you know how much um the, the exchange rate is going for you can't afford to fail you really have to read you know the support and the encouragement you need it at that time another person can also give you that support but the person might not you know know how much more they should be forceful with the support because they're not paying they don't understand the exchange rates they don't know what it means to fail level one two times they don't know what it's going to cost they only know that oh failure is a bad thing and they say yeah, do you want to fail do you want to fail but if it's somebody who is on the same boat with you person will tell you besides failing you're going to lose financial resources you are going to lose time that promotion is not going to come you know the person can give you 10 reasons why you must not fail and then your head will be straight then another person who doesn't really understand what cfa is and the person just saying you know you shall be the head and not the team and that's the only thing the person is saying I don't really ginger you like that. I don't know how it works for you, but this is how I like things working for me, where you have to give me five reasons why I need to do something. And I'm like, okay, I would think logically than more emotionally, right? Like you also said, some of the reasons why you have a personal board of director is because people come with different expertise, right? Some people know what you don't know. For example, I'm a banker. I work in a bank. I'm an investor relations officer. What I do is to manage investors for the bank. But if I'm to talk to an investor relations officer in a fintech or in a development space, it's a totally different ballgame. The same job role, different job descriptions because we're playing in different spaces. So I can't totally say I'm a pro at everything, right? So there are some things that you might want to consult me and say, Stella, oh, can you help me do this? And I'll say, oh, I'm unable to help you, not because I'm not good at what I do, but because my expertise isn't broad enough. So you cannot just sit in a silo and say, I'm just going to be friendly with just bankers. You also want to have relationship across industries, right? Across climbs as well, because the way investor relations runs in Nigeria would definitely be different from the way it will run in China. So you need to, you know, have different um, broad perspectives, right, for people around you. Um, the next thing is your um, personal board of directors. Like we said, there are people that you can be vulnerable with. There are some people that you cannot afford to be vulnerable with, right? So, for example, <laughs> let me give this analogy. I think it's something that we can relate to. So, you know, we all go to church or we have a spiritual figure that we all respect. And every time you need counseling or you need clarification or something, which your spiritual head to say, sir, I'm in a dilemma. I, I'm in a fix. I need your help with this. And then he gives you clarity and then you're happy and you go. Do you think that your spiritual head also does not have something that he's bothering him? But he will not talk to you about it. He has the people he talks to. So for counseling, he's talking down. But when he also needs counseling, he, he's talking up right so imagine you going to your spiritual head to say so i need your help with this and he tells you wait let me tell you my own problem maybe your own problem is like 500k problem and then he tells you his own problem four billion problem you just say don't worry sir I i'm okay i think i'm good you know so <laughs> your personal board of directors are people that you can always talk to your safe space where you can be vulnerable where you can cry where you can weep and everybody be like okay sorry you know give you those words and then you're good to go again and then people out there see and say oh you're just a super woman you're just a super girl you don't cry nothing is wrong with you no they don't understand and not everybody needs to understand right that's why you have to keep that circle small um next thing is you also want to um interact with people who are very dynamic and very adaptive for us here who are growing younger, 
think what <laughs> you know new technologies are coming up that some of us don't even understand and then you know the gen z's and the alpha generations they sort of pick it they get it so you cannot say um i'm not going to mingle with the younger generation right you would mingle with them because there's such there's such a thing also called reverse mentoring so you don't just want to mentor 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 give 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 you should be able to take you should be able to learn you should be able to say oh if i teach you this you're going to teach me these things so for example here um where i work we have a lot of gen z staff and then when they speak they use some of their terms that i don't understand so in their conversation sometimes i'm lost because it looks like they're speaking in acronyms and i'm like hey yo 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 hold up hold up hold up carry me along what are you people saying and you know it's one of the things that also helps you with humility and it helps you to also remember your age that oh god i'm not as young as i used to be and then you keep learning right so that's why you need a personal board of director so in your personal board of directors you have different categories which brings us fully to the um, class for today but i just thought that it was important for us to you know have that background so that we know where where we're actually coming from, right? So you have advisors, mentors, and sponsors. And as depicted with these um, concentric circles, you can see that the advisors are really, it, it takes a great space, it's large. You see that as it comes to mentors, you know, it's shrinking a bit. And then when it comes to um, sponsor, that's the smallest um, circle. Now, why advisors? Because everybody can advise. Everybody can give advice. If you put something on your WhatsApp status now and say, um, please, I'm going through this. How can I do it? There are people, if they, they would be able to advise you. Why? Because they're literally general things. And people can always say general things. They can always say, oh, this is how you should do it. This is how you should do it. This is how you should do it. You know, advice. So everybody can advise. And like one of my very funny comedian or my favorite comedian, the stalker would say, advice is, what you give somebody that you don't take because sometimes i see that, that i've advised somebody in a certain way and when i really you know check with myself i'm like ah stella you do not do this thing like that though but then it's just on a lighter notes right so advisors these are individuals people around you who can share their opinion you know tell you what they think about a certain issue sometimes it's not even their own experience right they heard it happen to somebody and you know they just give you the same thing but the thing is they definitely have something to say and some of those advice are useful right they might not come from experts they might just come from anybody right there are generic relationships that you have from general people no string attached no formal establishments all informal right um, just as if you're feeling somewhere now and you ask someone beside you, please, how can I do this? The person will be able to put you through, like, you know, very general things that are not technical. So let's not spend a lot of time on advisors. Let's move on to mentors. Now, mentors are a more selective and personal relationship now the mentors i'm referring to here are mentors that you know and mentors that know you because i know that some of us get mentored from reading a book maybe you have not met um a brand tracy before but you've read all of his books you've not met a um tdj bishop david Wade, the boy you've not met a kala harris you've not met um you know just tim ferries think of, of anybody right You've not met them before, Anthony Robbins, but you read their book so much so that you know how they think their thought process and all of that. You can share that. That's not what I'm referring to. The mentorship that I'm referring to here, don't forget that we're talking about your personal board of directors. So the mentorship that we're referring to here are individuals that you have approached, right? Or maybe they've had a conversation with you and you mutually agree that I would always seek this person's counsel for this area of my life. So it's a personal and selective relationship that exists between a person and another person. And, you know, the interesting thing about mentorship is you don't, you can have more than one mentor. You don't need to have one mentor for everything because 
one person is not grounded in everything, right? So for the different phase of your life, you can have a mentor. For example, as a young child growing up, the mentor you would have most likely is if you're in primary one, you have somebody in primary three, primary four, or primary five, primary six. We usually call them school mother, school father, where they always guide you on, oh, you don't understand this question, or this how to go about it. You know, most of the time it's always academic and things around academics, right? Oh, you didn't come to the assembly. Oh, this senior punished you. Oh, I'll speak to this senior. Oh, I'll help you speak to this teacher. Oh, I'll stop that bully from attacking you. Because at the, at the phase of your life, that time, that's what's most important, right? Is it that relationships or marriage are not important? Of course, they are important, but not as important in the grand scheme of things. The only relationship you're thinking about is, oh, my friends, will I be friends with my class captain? Will I be friends with this prophet and all of that, right? As you get to the university as well, you have tutorials you have a relationship with your tutorial teacher you know they're your mentors for example for me when I was in school I was always looking for okay so who um is the first class student ahead of me who is the best student that has graduated who is the most approachable lecturer I want that person to be my mentor and you know I just always go with that person and then for and that was for my academics but then in the school as well I was a and I'm still a spiritual person. So I had, you know, a fellowship. I had a pastor. I had someone guiding me. So you can have mentors for different areas of your life. And these mentors are people that they're not going to hide anything from. Why? Because they have gone through what you are going through. Or they have gone through what you will go through. So you cannot afford to say you are packaging or you are hiding or you are not saying the truth. You have to lay it bare. You have to say it as it is. Sa, ma, this is what I'm going through. They definitely would have gone through what you're going through. That's why I'm saying that you cannot have one person for everything, right? So, for example, if I, as a, I'm a career person, if I want to choose a career mentor, it is unwise for me to choose a pure entrepreneur, right? As a career person, it is unwise for me to choose an entrepreneur who has never worked in nine to five because the person might not understand office politics the person might not understand office romance the person might not understand toxic toxic bosses the person might not understand and what it means to suck up to bosses you know all of those things that happens in the corporate world the person might not understand it but the person a good person yes is the person a successful business person yes but that is not the person that i need at this time right so I need to pick likes for likes, put round things in round holes and put square things in square holes. If I'm going to transition to business, then I know, okay, I can have that business person, right? So the person cannot be my mentor, but the person can be my advisor for other things. If I also say, okay, I want to, I want to get married before the end of this year, I need to begin to have conversations with married people, people who are already there to say, oh, see that these are, things that you should look out for this is how you should prepare have you observed this have you noticed this do you know that this is what happens you know different conversations will begin to come for that phase right so these are people that you can be vulnerable to and the reason why you are vulnerable to them is because they can give you tailor-made advice so they're not giving you google advice or advice that they researched so imagine somebody that's never gone to university advising somebody in university. So the person will know that there, there are different lecture theaters for different courses. But the person know that there are some courses called electives. The person doesn't know. But the only thing the person will tell you is make sure you pass your exam. Make sure you are the best. But beyond that, somebody that's going to university will tell you, oh, besides, don't be too engaged in certain extracurricular activities, some things are distractions, make sure you stay on campus or don't stay off campus. The person is able to give you tailor-made advice. That's what a mentor will do for you. And the thing is, if you're in the career space or in a business space, your mentor doesn't necessarily have to work in your organization. For example, my mentor doesn't have to work in my organization. 
but my mentor does a nine to five. My mentor understands what's happening in the corporate world and is able to give me tailor made advice from their own experience wherever they are. If my mentor is in my in the same organization, congratulations to me, all well and good. That doesn't mean that when I leave the organization, the person can no longer be my mentor, right? I hope this is clear. Um, you know, the, the rules for mentorship is inexhaustible. So as I've shared some of these things, I'm sure we're able to note, okay, I don't need one mentor, right? Because there are some people that would be your mentor and maybe they have a failed marriage. Does it mean they're a bad person? No, it just didn't work out for them in that space. So you might necessarily not want to take marriage advice from them maybe because you're scared. Or you might also want to take advice from them to know how not to make that mistake. That is if they are willing to be vulnerable with you to that level. Because maybe the reason why you chose them to be your mentor was for academics. And so it would just stay at academics, right? But if you now want to take it in your child, some people will be able to mentor you in two areas. You might have um, a mentor in your organization as like your career mentor, but also a is also very big into fitness and health and all of that. And it can tell you, you need to trim down on what you eat. You need to drink a lot of water. So the person can double, but you don't need to have one mentor for everything. I think that we should not overflow this mentorship thingy, right? So I'm sure we've gotten the points for that. And next, and which is one of the most important one, is sponsors. Now, sponsorship is something that a lot of people are not even, you know, privy to. You just think, oh, particularly when you work. In an organization, you just think, oh, I'm going to work and then my work will speak for me and then I'll get promoted. That can work at the base. Because remember that in an organization or in life generally, it's like a pyramid. The base is always full with a lot of people. But you, to make it to the next level, you need to be exceptional. There are certain things that you have to do. To make it to the next level again, there are certain things that you have to do, right? And at some point, Beyond being objective, because we are humans, certain subjectivity will come in. That's why some people would be promoted and then some people will not be promoted. And it's not like they don't work hard. It's just that life happened, right? And I don't want us to be those people where we suffer such things or life happens to us. That's why it's very important for us to speak about the concept of sponsorship. It is very, very key. Now, we said... um. Advice, advisors, these are like general relationships that you can have. Mentorship is selective and personal. You know, you intentionally go to meet a person to say, I want you to be my mentor. I want you to guide me. I want you to do this. But you know, sponsor is a notch higher, right? It's a strategic relationship. You don't just want to meet anybody and say, be my sponsor. See, just like the way it sounds to you, a sponsor, somebody who is ready to support you. A mentor will support you. A mentor will coach you. A mentor will guide you. A sponsor will open the door. <laughs> a, a sponsor would pull down any hindrance, any barrier, any blockage, any obstacle. A sponsor clears the way. A sponsor is the one that can hold your hands and take you to places that you would literally never get to on your own. A sponsor is someone who is ready to go the extra mile, who is ready to spend their, their capital for you. A sponsor is one who is able to, able and ready to use their leverage for you. So think of capital. If you say it's a business you want to start, a sponsor is able to give you the money. If you say it's relationship, the sponsor is able to connect you. If you say it's a position, the sponsor is able to give you that position. If it's a place where your name needs to be mentioned, the sponsor is able to mention your name in that close room, on that table. Simply put, a sponsor is an individual that has a seat at the table of power. He has a voice where decisions are being made. He's being heard and his word is being responded to, right? Your sponsor is a decision maker. He's the one who can speak for you in closed doors and nobody would dispute. He's the one who can take you into rooms. He's the one who is exposed to your work. The person knows what you can do. The person knows your limits. The person knows the heights that you can reach. So even when you don't look at it now, the person knows that you have a potential and in five years time, you'll be able to do certain things that you just doubt yourself and say, ah, no, I'm not sure that I can do this. Or 
ah, this is really bigger than me. They're pushing me further than I can imagine, right? That is a sponsor. The person is ready to go all out. The person is ready to go all the way, you know, Particularly, some of us want to call it Godfatherism. Whatever word or term you want to use for it, it is very important for each and every one of us to have a sponsor. Why? Because as you go up the ladder, the spaces are limited, right? The tussle becomes real. Sometimes it becomes toxic. And it is when someone is able to mention your name, that's when people will listen. That's why you can take promotion lists and then someone will be like, ah, who is this person? I don't know this person. Remove it. Why? Because they don't know you. That should not be said of you, right? That should not even be your case at all. So today, wherever you are, whatever industry you are playing is, you know, the thing is most of the time, this sponsorship thing, we see it more in politics where you see this person has already, you know, when the election has not even started or campaign has not started and you already know who will be governor. Or you already know who will be president. That's what sponsorship is. And they all revolve around relationships. So you cannot say, oh, I don't have friends. I'm on my own. No man is an island. There's nothing called a self-made man. No, we are all creatures of relationship. And we will continue to thrive and flourish in relationship. That's why your environment matters. Where you find yourself matters, right? So how do you get a great sponsor? How do you get a great sponsor? Now, the thing is, there are two ways that you can get a, a, a sponsor. But before we go to that, insights on how to get a sponsor. If you know that you're a business person or I'm going to use the career space largely for this example. If you work in an organization, whatever department you have found yourself, make sure you deliver exceptional performance, right? Because you're not the only one on that position. You're not the only one in that department. So you cannot do basic work, barest minimum, like every other person, and say, ah, I cannot come and kill myself. I cannot come and go and die. It's not my father's business. Eh, I'm just paid to do nine to five. It's only those that go the extra mile that will get extraordinary results. Deliver exceptional performance. If it's something that has to do with writing, let your writing be beautiful. Find how to incorporate storytelling. Understand punctuations. Let them see your work and know that your work is different from your colleagues' work, right? That's exceptional performance. Turn your work in in time. If it's something that is maybe time-based or um, pressure-based, find how to manage pressure. No faster ways to do it. Get cheaper ways to do it. Get easy ways to do it. Deliver exceptional performance. That way, somebody will be looking at your work. Your sponsor doesn't necessarily have to be the end of an organization. Because sometimes the end of an organization, oh, well, I'm good. Might be in charge of a prison, might be in charge of who is being promoted. What if that is not the case in the promotional hierarchy or structure of that organization? Just deliver exceptional work anywhere you find yourself. Then visibility and authenticity. Don't try to be like another person. Don't try to fake it. Don't try to change your voice. Because somebody is using American accents, you should say you want to use um, accents. When, when they now check your access, you have mixed British, America, Canadian, and Jamaican together. Just be yourself, right? If you are going to have an accent, you can come. Or if you need to go to an elo elocution school, go to an elocution school to get all of that. But just be authentic, be you. If you try to be like another person, the best you would be is a photocopy. Why do you want to be a photocopy? When you have been created to be original, there's no one like you. There are no two persons alike on this earth. So be you. Being different is even what adds the spice to it, right? So be yourself. Have visibility. There are different ways you can get visibility. Definitely, when you do good work, you get visibility. Another thing is, if you definitely find yourself in meetings, make sure you speak. Don't speak rubbish. When any time you're going to be invited for a meeting, you would be told. And sometimes you're not told. It's impromptu. But then you say, well, what's the meeting about? And they tell you maybe a one-liner. You can quickly Google, you can quickly check something. Okay, and say we're having a meeting with um, this company. Quickly go online, look about, look at the company, what's the um, board of directors like, or what is the 
um, subject of the meeting, oh, is there anything, if you have been reading the news, oh, is there anything about them that they definitely want to, want to talk about or they want us to help them with? That helps you to ask reasonable questions or make valuable contributions. So that when you're at the meeting, you will not be in a one-hour meeting and nobody hears your voice. And it, the meeting will just end like that. Do you think your boss will be happy to bring you to that meeting? But if you ask a question that even your boss did not think about, and your boss is like, hmm, brilliant question. Next time there's a meeting, we'll be happy to carry you along because you have shown that you have value. Another way you can add visibility is some people can speak. Some people, they look good. They're always neat. Their hair is always on point. Then they always look beautiful. So they say, oh, even though they cannot speak, at least they look good. Let's carry the person along. Something, just let something work for you. Find a strategy that works for you, but be visible. Don't be that person that would be at work and then your colleagues will not even know that you're at work. Whether you're at work or you're not at work, they don't know. They don't feel your presence. No, that's very wrong. And also, in every organization where you work, I know that, yes, um, some people say, I'm just here to work. An organization is not a place where you are friendly. Everybody cannot be your friend. Everybody cannot be your friend. It doesn't mean that you should not talk to everybody. You should not know their names or you should not greet them and they should not greet you. No, build relationship, even elevator relationship. Hi, good morning. You look good. Give a compliment. Smile. Always wear a smile as much as possible. Sometimes I tell myself, ah, let me, I need to wear a smile because I remember meeting somebody one time and he was like, oh, I don't greet you because every time I see your face, you're not, you are always squeezing your face. For some of us, it might be reflex. For some of us, we need to retrain ourselves to say, let me be smiling. And you know that you now be smiling like ah, someone be thinking, okay, this person mentally stable. You know, we just find a way to balance it. Improvement, right? I'm not just saying be authentic. Don't say, oh, smiling is not for me. Everybody's supposed to smile. You're supposed to look cheerful. You're supposed to look joyful. You're supposed to look happy, right? You cannot be squeezing your face all the time. It will repel favor. It will repel good things. And the smile is like the cheapest makeup. It doesn't cost a thing. So just say, if you'll be reacting with Nero, just just find a way just smile don't squeeze your face or let your countenance be great be joyful it will radiate it will sound in your voice right so build relationships articulate your career goals because when you know what you want when you know where you're headed it's easy for you to identify a sponsor to say if i want to be the best fundraiser in nigeria which is one of my goals by the way it means that i need to work with somebody who is able or has raised funds so I know that I cannot be looking for the best medical doctor. Is the person bad? No, but that's not my career goal. I don't want to give anybody an injection. I don't want to go into the theater. I don't want to make recommendations of prescriptions. So as much as that person is a great person, that person can be my sponsor at that time. It might be maybe for something else, the person can be my sponsor. Maybe when I want to raise funds for building a hospital, then the person can speak for me and say, oh, she manages my account. She has raised funds for me and she can do this, right? So that's why I always say non-mutually ex exclusive. And then there's also such a thing called proactive networking, which is most likely what all of us are doing here, right? So proactive networking, for example, on this on this um video, we have an entire demo follow. Kyo Demoro follow was my classmate in Yabatech, and this was over a decade ago, right? So if I, if I become the governor of Delta State today, Kyo Demoro follow, I mean, has been my friend. We have a good relationship, even though we don't see often or we haven't seen as frequently, right? But he can always call. He has my number. He can reach out to me and say, Stella, how far? Congratulations. That's practice networking. Why? Because when we're in school, we're already speaking. Imagine I didn't speak to him at all in school. Or I can't put a face to the name. And then I become governor. Or he becomes governor. And then that's when I want to call. That is reactive networking. Connect with, it's easier for you to connect with people now when it looks like they are nothing. Don't wait for them to be successful and then you know, say, I will connect with them when they make it. It might be harder then because they don't even know why you're coming around because really, why are you even coming around because they made it? If they did not make it, you will not come around. So don't be a, pro, um, a reactive networking person. Be proactive. We're not saying call them every day or greet them every day. I don't think I've spoken to Moro uh, Folu in three years, but doesn't mean that when he calls me, maybe after this class, we're not going to jive and you know catch up on all the three years. 
compared to somebody who I would, I would just meet me downstairs and I say, hi, Stella, I want to meet you. I'm like, sorry. What if I don't have the time, right? So the next thing is reciprocate. Just like you're saying, oh, I want somebody to be my sponsor. I want somebody to be my sponsor. There's also somebody that is there because the truth is, there's always somebody behind you who is also looking up to you to say, ah, Stella, I want Stella to be my sponsor. I want to be like Stella. The person's goal at that time was maybe that. Well, Stella has gotten a job. She has changed jobs successfully twice. Let me just even get my first job. Stella should be able to guide me. If I see how, how our CV is written, maybe if I write my CV like that, it will be better. Oh, I need to see professional exam she has taken. Maybe I, so, I should also take them. It's going to make sense. Whatever. Do unto others what you want them to do to you. You know how they say treat others the way you want to be treated. That's the golden rule. But you know, there's also such a thing for the platinum rule, which is the British rule. Treat others the way they want to be treated. That one is hard. And that's where it's all, um, emotional intelligence comes in. But that's a discussion for another day. We're still on our sponsorship. So now, you know, I mentioned that there are two key ways that we can get um, sponsors. So besides um, and, um, this general insight on how to get sponsors, Generally, all of these things are actually categorized on that two broad brackets, and it's called the check on the So they're called the currencies, the currencies for attracting sponsorship. Now there are two main currencies. Um, I don't mind you taking like screenshots and you know making it a post on social media if you've learned anything from any slide that's very insightful and you think oh you should share this with your brother network and please tag me i'll be happy to repost right okay so essential currencies for attracting sponsors two broad categories that is known to man you know there's always a spiritual angle where god can put your thoughts in somebody's heart and then the person comes to look for you spiritual currency right but um apologies for the Spelling of performance, that should be N instead of M, right? So performance currency and relationship currency or relational currency. Now, what is performance currency? Now, performance currency refers to the tangible and measurable value that you bring to your role and your organization. So some people, the only reason why they become your sponsor, right, is because you work for them. That's why in the previous slide, you said deliver excellent work. Now, any sponsor that you attract with performance currency is a sponsor that is exposed to the work that you do. So it means that the first thing that they know you for, the first encounter with you is that, oh, this person is good. This person knows her work. She's always turning in high quality work. Um, she's always exceeding our expectations. She's always going over and beyond, you know. So you are known for credibility and competence. So the person will take it upon themselves to say, when they hear people saying, oh, I need somebody that can do this for me and all of that, they're like, well, say no more. And they call your name. I know that Prince can do it. He can manage all of your projects. What kind of projects is it? How long is it going to take? I know Prince, he can do it. He's the, he's the best man for the job. I'm sure you heard that word, best man for the job. And you just give it to the person. Why? Because the sponsor has been privy to their work. But not everybody might be privy to your work. So the next way you can also get a sponsor is through relational currency or relationship currency. Some people, the first way they will know you is from it's from greeting, right? So for example, if like me, you work in a bank, your divisional head might just be maybe a general manager or a senior banking officer. The person also has a level of influence, but the person is not as influential as maybe an ED, right? But because it's an organization, you go to the lunch room to eat. Don't sit down alone with your plates. You you know the ED. You know when you work in an organization, you know the top level management. But top level man management doesn't know everybody at the bottom level management, right? So you see the ED seated in the lunch room there, having lunch. Take your tray. Or food, go and sit down there and you know just speak to the ED. Good morning, sir, or good afternoon, sir. Most of the time, they're always excited to do this because a lot of people don't want to sit down with them. They're like, ah, don't let me go and sit down with a girl. If there's a question that you've been trying to understand in the organization, you can just speak to him, sir. Oh, sir, so I see that the organization is doing this way. 
um this is what i think how do so of course you have to read the room so you know there are times where you see somebody's face i know that this person is not in the mood and there are other times where they are the ones that would even ask you a question oh how long have you been here or oh, i've never seen your face before are you new how long have you been here? Oh, what department? Oh, what do you do? How long have you been here? It's an opportunity for you to sell yourself. So you always practice that elevator pitch. Maybe it's something we should talk about next week. How to have an ele elevator pitch. Know how you are going to sell yourself. Don't start saying MMM. -M -M, or that's why we always say look nice, dress nice as well. Because you never know when that opportunity will come. You know, wear a nice cologne. You also want to smell nice. You want to carry a nice aura. Don't squeeze your face, you know. Find that opportunity, sell yourself. So first, the ED is meeting you, not on a job level. Now it's on a relationship level, and then you say goodbye, and then you go. Maybe next time again, you enter the elevator, you see the same ED. Don't say I'm not greeting him. Greet him again. Oh, good morning, sir. How was your weekend? Have a nice day. Whoever is dropping off first, have a nice day. So yeah, encountering yourself is just on a relationship basis. Just. And uh, maybe you you go for a, an event outside the ED, the speaker. You see him there. You say hi. You do all of that. He's taking note of you. She's taking note of you on a relational basis. But sometimes relationship alone might not be enough. The person would also get to want to know your work, right? Because when a sponsor wants to speak for you, the person wants to be able to go all out. The person is saying, when they say, can you do it? He can do it. Can she do it? She can do it. How can she do it? She can do it well. I really can she do it. She can really, 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 really do it. In fact, sometimes it's also be like, I'm not really sure this person can do it. And because they have grown their credibility and reputation to a certain extent, they cannot afford, you also cannot afford to mess up. Right? So beyond relationship as well, some would, would just be relationship. Some would be performance currency. Some would be boards. The thing is, now that you know the essential currencies for attracting a sponsor, don't be found wanting on any of them. Always bring your A game every day and any day, right? Um. So next is, I thought that it would be nice for us to take a case study. And, you know, I just thought about somebody, ah, is this okay? Barack Obama. I'm sure we know that no one ever imagined in the world that a black man would become the president of, the United States of America. Like when they're mentioning countries in the world, number one, USA and others, that a black American of African descent or origin would become the president. But if you read his story, you'd have seen the track records. And as I said, there's really no person that is a that is an island or that is a one man pole or that can do it all by himself. We're all products of relationships, right? So relationships matter but not just every relationship like we said intentional deliberate strategic relationships that what you need for every phase of your life that's why if you really look at these rich people they don't like their kids marrying poor people it's only in films that we see that thing happen but in reality because you know that relationship forges things you cannot just say oh i just want to marry this person just because i want to marry no there's intentionality in everything that they do so don't approach life casually same thing with this relationship. So Barack Obama had an advisor, David Agnerroy. And, you know, they, if you really, like, afterwards now, go ahead and read about David Agnerroy. David Agnerroy is one who was, like, his political strategist. Like, he was so good that he was always, you know, coming up with how the messaging for the campaign should be, what the media strategy should be, what the placement should be, the how everything, he marked out everything, he's a strategist, like end to end. You know, there's people that just, when you have them on your team, you know that they are game changers. They're not going to do basic. Just like in, in Nigeria, we had Debola Lagos and Chude, you know, do political campaign then. It was such a big deal. And the president won, you know, the, the past president, President Mohamed Bari, like they know how to package things. They know how to, they can sell ice to an Eskimo. Right? So, Barack Obama had David, sorry, not Davis, David Axelrod on his team. Of course, there are so many political strategies that I could have hired, but there's always somebody who's just the best for you. Find that person and hold that person. Next, he also had a mentor, a spiritual mentor, Reverend Jerry Meyer Wright. He was a spiritual mentor to Barack Obama. You know, he was always helping. He was 
through that mentorship that he was able to shape Obama's um, knowledge or, or perspective on what social justice should be like. And you know, at that time, everybody was just, a lot of things were happening around Black Lives Matter and everything where it, it just was like it was the right time to latch on something. Like, you know, when you just take advantage of something and it goes beyond just being a third force, like we, we saw in the past election, Peter will be where it just goes beyond being the third force thought force it's just a voice where everyone just agrees that no enough is enough we want something different right and then he had emmy jones a prominent figure in illinois um politics right he was the president of illinois senate you know he was there he was strategic he was there you know all through the while where obama was was going in his career he was always there to provide visibility and opportunities for obama in his any early career life that's why there's this quote that says that what got you here won't take you there. There are some relationships you need for now. You can't despise them. There are some job experiences you need for now. You can't despise them. They look like, oh, I'm just I'm just running errands. I'm just doing this. The period of those running errands might be teaching you how to persevere, how to be understanding, how to listen well, so that when they send you on an errand, you're not going to go twice. So it means that if you're sharpening your listening skills, not knowing that you need it for the job of the future, for that position in the future where they'll say, we need a great listener. And you know that, ah, if he's listening, best in listening, this is me. So you need to know part time what you need. And that's just, this. so there's no way you will mention Barack Obama's story. So, you know, I didn't put wife and all that. This doesn't mean that he's, he, of, he had a wife and he had a best friend who were equally instrumental but because for our topic we're talking about advisors mental and sponsors that are calling out these specific people and also we know that your spouse is very important because if his spouse was troublesome or not giving him peace of mind i'm not sure he would also have made that presidency right and if he he also had friends you know he had a, a female best friend who was also there for him all of those are important so each and every one of us i don't think there's anybody you want to mention that has risen to the top that didn't have any of this. It's, it's not possible. In fact, in Nigeria, the, <laughs> the case studies are a lot. Let's not mention it. If you want to mention the richest man in Nigeria, if you want to mention Dangote, there are certain names that you would mention. You would mention his uncle, Dan Fata. You would definitely mention people. You would mention the government. Because the government who provided policies that aided him. You would mention Femi Otedola who is also a very good friend. So now, this is you just thinking hypothetically, if somebody wants to write the biography of my life now, or autobiography, who is, who is my advisor? Who is my mentor? Do I even have a sponsor? Do I even have any of these things? Or I only have friends and girlfriend or wife. Food for thought, just for you to think about it. So we can go on and on with mentioning people. You can also say you want to talk about um, Ibukwa Woshika. She has a bed talk. We don't talk about sponsorship. She has. Um, we don't talk about um her personal board of directors, which she also calls her tribe. She has them, solid women. And that's why every year she would always have that international women in leadership conference, right? So it's very important for you to know that people don't just happen, people do not just get to the top by accident. So you say, ah, but it was here before they didn't make it. It's relationship. We are all products of relationship, right? And where we're going to go to, how far we're going to go is also determined by the people that we know. So look out for quality people and valuable people. So my question is, to you is, do you have a triad strategy, right? Who is your advisor? Who is your mentor? Who is your strategist? I'm sorry, who is your sponsor? If you don't have, the means to have, you know, some of the things I told myself this year, I started writing some career goals because, you know, as we begin to get clarity on where we want to be eventually in our lives, we begin to know, oh, these are the things I want, these are the things that I do not want. So I started thinking about it. I really need a career mentor that is really doing what I'm doing. I know I have career mentors, but the career mentors I have at this stage are career mentors that you know, help me with who I want to transition from a job or oh, my boss is treating me this way. But now I want on the job technical expertise. Somebody that I, I want to be a forgery. That's one of the things I want to I want to be able to put capital together to help people 
grow their business, start their business and push their business forward. It's something I'm very passionate about because lots of people have money, but they don't know where to put it. They're like, what's their investment can I put it in? So I want to serve as that bridge and I connect people to the resources that they need. Where you make your money, you're happy. You grow your business, you're happy. I take my commission or I make my change. And I'm happy. We're all happy. And then the economy is also happy. We're blessing everybody, right? So I told myself, I've written the names. I'm not going to tell you. Look for your own. And <laughs> intentionality. Find a way to connect to them. LinkedIn is there. Cold call, cold call. Look for the top five people. Cold call. Somebody, one of them will answer you. So we've come to the end of this class. And I just want to, you know, remind everyone who's just joining us for the first time. Thank you so much for coming. And so about this, this is the Stella Live Show. And just as the name says, Stella, it means that you should live an exceptional life, a very beautiful life. You know, it's a show that has to do with personal development in your career or everything <laughs> that you do. Uh, Prince is saying, <laughs> he's shedding tears. I should drop my career mentors. <laughs> I don't think our goals are the same. If our goals are the same, then I'll share it with you, right? <laughs> um, but I know that Mr. Um, Ugo would like to know my career mentors because we all need that funding to scale our businesses, right? So it's all about just, you know, helping people to grow, to develop. Most of these things is, you know, they're usually my nuisance to say, what am I thinking about this week? What am I, how do I want to sell myself? And, you know, um, next week we're going to talk about elevator pitch. What can you say that wow somebody in one minute and the person just likes you? That's what we're going to be doing next week. You know, I created one. I think I, when I look at it now, I would have, I would, it would have changed because the me of last year is not the me of this year, and I'll be happy to share my strategy and other elevator pitches of certain people around me. So I want to thank you so much for joining class today. Um, and for those that are watching this video, thank you for coming this far. If you have any questions, please share. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's going to be uploaded on YouTube. Please share with your friends and family. And one of the ways you can encourage is also by subscribing, liking, and, you know, just, you know, take a step further to drop a comment. Don't just say nice class. Like, what's that particular thing that struck you in this class? And I can assure you that um, it's going to be a blessing for all of us. And technology recognizes our algorithm. When people are liking things at the same time they're like okay let's show this to other people we think there's value here thank you so much for your time i'm ready to take your questions 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 thank you for that kind compliment Marofoli.